sanguine. Yeah, we are a community of faith that are optimistic. We are discovering the mystery and intrigue of a walk of faith. So welcome. So excited you're here today. So, uh, as I'm recording this, sorry, I dropped out there for a second. I don't know how bad it's going to be an interruption, but my video camera, I just got a new phone because I smashed my own phone, old phone and I have phone insurance. And so I got this new phone and for some reason it just shuts off and closes the app. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. So we're going to try to deal with those technical issues. Plus some of you may notice that, uh, I don't have that big ball and yes, I have upgraded some equipment painfully painfully it's uh yeah i went back and i had been listening to some of the previous podcasts and i was like man we got to get this sound better and uh yeah it hurt the pocketbook a little bit and there's been some support that has come in but not nearly what i spent so anyway uh i hope you guys are enjoying this and uh yeah because you deserve it and like we were talking about our god and even if you're outside the faith and you're not there yet, he has spurred something in you to seek the genuine. And he has brought you to this unique, weird place called the Sanguine Podcast from all over the world that started in this little community in Montana with people that gathered and wanted to build community. And here we are. Is that not the coolest thing? I think it's just so cool. And uh, I am so glad to be a part of a group of people like us that are going after the genuine faith and we just don't take things at face value. And so today what I want to get into, yep, we are past the elections, but not really because the elections go on and on. And yes, there is a declared winner by the media. And uh, those of you that probably listen to this podcast for the most part, although this isn't true and this doesn't exclude you, but generally, people of faith are conservative people, and they tend to land in the Republican Party, even though the Republican Party has not served us well. And so for this election, for a lot of you out there, this is a very hard election. And the, the outcome isn't set yet, but it appears to be set. And I'm definitely not going to call it because I know that God works in strange and mysterious ways. Is Donald Trump God's candidate? I'm not going to say that. But I'm going to say that we can look at the values. And one of the things that God values more than anything, and get ready, when I get some sound effects here, we're going to have the sound effects because this is going to be like, ooh, this is a point where maybe you turn Tom off. God loves people. And so a president and an administration that supports the life, yes, we're talking the unborn life, which has been unequivocally proven to be human and viable. God loves that. And he loves you. And you were once that in the womb. You were there. And as people of faith, we believe that he created us and he put us there. So it just brings God sadness when the choice is to take that because he loves people and he loves you. And so that's all the farther I'm going to go with that. I don't necessarily like getting into politics. And today what I'm going to talk about is the, as I knock the microphone, we'll see how this new mic does. I'm hoping it performs really well. But the election antidote. And so how do you cure if you're one of those people and maybe you're a Democrat and you live in a state like Montana, which the whole state went red. And so for you, this is a panic moment. This is not about Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals. This is how do you live a faith walk with these elections and the things that's depending on what the outcome are, appear to be out of control. Well, Today, I believe I'll have some good news for you. And let me just, uh, I got my handy dandy note sheet here. We'll do a little Rush ball, and we'll shake the note sheet here. <laughs> uh, the first thing that I wrote is that there are many, if not all of us, because probably none of us got the election results that we wanted. And as each of us are individuals, we do have individual passions and desires. So the fact that the election results are not satisfying for everybody, it means that there's some of us that really aren't happy. And there's some of us that are really distraught out there. And I have to tell you, like the rest of us, I really wrestled with that for a period because I was just, there are some things as a small business owner that I was concerned about. And you have your concerns. Maybe it's healthcare. Maybe are there other issues 
that were on the ballot in your state that you were concerned about and they didn't turn out the way you had hoped. And so you're fretting and you're anxious. Well, let me tell you that I had this overwhelming sense and God, sometimes we have these, I call them like caveman club moments because he's like, kook, kook. I'm going to tell you the obvious here, Tom. What is obvious? And God's like, was I in control before the election? I'm like, yes. Was I in control during the election? I'm like, of course. Am I in control now? And I'm like, yeah. You know how you know the answer, but you don't feel the answer. And God's like, don't you think your future is in my hands? And I had this internal wrestling. He's like, well, I know that intellectually, but I'm not feeling it here. I'm worried and I'm a little sick and I'm really concerned. (sighs) And God's like, I need you. And he reminded me of a scripture, and I'm not going to tell you where this is at, because you can find it. And part of this podcast is about opening your eyes or reminding you wherever you're at in your faith walk that there are some wonderful scriptures. And one of the scriptures, and it's in the New Testament, and it's a book that starts with a, a number and a P, so you should be able to get there. And it talks about you should speak the very words of God. Now, let's go back. And if you haven't listened to previous podcasts, I'm just going to talk about something that I've talked about before. What are the words that God speaks? God speaks life. And in the very beginning in creation, when he spoke, things came into existence. And so as we speak the very words of God, we speak life. And God's like, to me, this is what he said to me. And I think that you can grab onto this too. And this can be for you also. But God said, Tom, it isn't about what's happening and all those things around, because in previous years and in previous administrations, we should have lost this house that I'm sitting in the closet with right now. And God, in a very dark time in my life, called me to speak like he's calling me now, which I think he's always called me to do. But then sometimes this uh, thing, this head is a little stubborn. And so I don't always do it. But he said, Tom, there's no reason and you have no resources to save the house, but I want you to start speaking that you're going to continue to live here and you're going to have a future here. And someday, maybe I'll tell you the whole story, but miraculously, okay, not like these nice coincidences. This is miraculously, we are still here and we made it through that tough time. And so the time coming up is no different. God is calling me. He's like, Now, you can agree with all those people out there that are on Facebook and Instagram and they're posting pictures of five and six dollar gas and they are prophesying. Okay, I'm using that word very specifically about their future and their country's future. And they're speaking. Now, some of you aren't going to like this and you didn't like it probably when I talked about it in previous podcasts, but your words have power. And so when you speak, you don't realize they have power, but they still do, even if you don't realize it. So if you begin speaking into your future, all this stuff, and then it happens and you're disappointed, why are you disappointed? Okay, I'm speaking into my future, no matter what happens for all the things around me. I think one of my friends just texted me about cigars. That's pretty cool. Yes, I'm like a little raccoon. I get distracted when I'm looking at my phone, but the video is still on. And so that's really fantastic. Yes, Tom, get back on track here. But I'm going to speak those things and I'm going to listen to God, but I know what God talks about because there's another scripture where the things he tells us to think on, whatever is good, right, lovely, and just. Yeah, the good thing. So as I'm thinking about my future and as I'm speaking about my future, okay, the election just happened. And for me, yes, there's a lot of things that I'm disappointed about and I'm sure is for you too but I'm not going to speak those out. I'm not going to begin to declare. And as I see things on Facebook that they're predicting all these awful things and devastating things, and they may happen. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and agree with them, but what I am going to agree is that my father, yeah. And uh, if you're on the fence, I recommend that you meet him. And it's as simple as introducing yourself and start talking. Okay. You can do that, but he owns the cattle on a thousand Hills. And it talks about in the new Testament, how he cares deeply about me and not to worry about my future. Matthew, oh, about like five plus books in there. That's a good place to start is Sermon on the Mount and read forward, maybe till 10. You're going to find some great scriptures about worry in there and how your God or could be your God if you're on the fence takes care of you. And so this is your election antidote. And I wonder if the turmoil and the undecisiveness has been is that God is reminding us once again where our power lies. Our power lies in faith and in prayer. Okay, 
A lot of us think our power relies in our ability to argue and our ability to post these really great memes on Facebook. And if we post these really great memes, people are going to go, oh, I want to be on your side. The division in our country is so deep right now. I don't care what you argue. I don't care what you post. You probably more than likely for all that effort you're putting into could have put a quarter of that effort into prayer and meditation and reading your Bible and you would have peace and you would have results. Okay, when you're fighting against things that don't make sense, and we had a previous podcast, or I should say I did, and if you listened, then that makes we, which is really cool because we is a good thing. And I like we because I like community. But you know that prayer makes the difference. And I wonder if the season that God's saying, will you just stop arguing, stop watching Fox News, stop watching all the news sources, whatever your news source is, C-SPAN, and that you're endlessly glued to the radio and you're endlessly glued to everything and you think you're actually making a difference in the outcome that you aren't doing squat. That's not what I wanted to say. And if you listen to my other podcast, yep, I probably would have said that other word. But <laughs> not that I'm afraid to say it because I'm not. And I do say it, but I like to save my exclamation marks. And I've talked about that before. But emphasis, okay, we, and I think God is answering prayers by thwarting things that we take for granted. And that we, instead of praying, we've been arguing and we trust our vote. Tom, are you saying that you shouldn't vote? Absolutely not. You need to do everything in your power and your civic duty to be interactive with your community and make a difference for the positive. But that should be out of the time you have left after you have prayed yourself tirelessly. Okay, part of this podcast is your future. There's two things here. It is an encouragement and it's a chastisement. Let's do the encouragement first. Your future is in the hands of your God. And don't you want to agree with him about your future? Because he says, Yep, and this is in a book that starts with J in the New Testament. I have come that you may have life. Okay, he's not talking about eternal life because he says, I have come that you have it to the full. Well, eternal life is like eternal, and so you're already full. He's talking about the life here. And so if you have any doubt, I'm just going to tell you that you're wrong and you need to look at that scripture because God says that you would have life to the full. Now, sometimes that fullness for you involves some character development. And so that doesn't necessarily feel good, but a full life, like when you have a full bicep or you have a skinny belly, that came through a little pain and effort. And so sometimes fullness, I think most times fullness does not have to do with ease. It has to do with work. Yeah, you see me looking up, it's because sometimes I get distracted and I have to look for those words that come down here. And so and God is encouraging us during this tumultuous season that he wants us to speak those words of life about our future because I am going to have a positive future. And if the world is tumultuous around me, I will have the peace of the master creator of life and peace and light here. How about you? Are you going to forfeit that? Give it away? I'm not. I'm grabbing onto it and I'm holding onto it and I'm using this thing and I'm using this thing because I'm going to read the scriptures. I'm going to use my imagination and I'm going to speak those things into my future. That's the antidote for the TV and you thinking you can make difference. And you sometimes can, like going out and vote does make a difference and supporting candidates does make a difference. But I'm going to tell you, prayer makes so much more of a difference. And I'm guessing if you're like me, maybe you're not, but you spend a whole lot more time arguing and doing other things than you did in the prayer closet bowing before the Father and the Holy Spirit and Jesus and saying there are deceptions and there are things at play that don't make sense. Will you just bring your power and your like uh, discernment and your unraveling into these situations that life and light can come about? Okay, so that was encouragement. And part of that was the chastisement too, right? It's stop with the news. Stop with the social media. Stop with the endless thinking and arguing with your friends and discussing things for the 50,000th time. It's time to stop. It's time to stop the Christian amnesia. It's time to quit being <laughs> a pseudo Christian. It's time to be a real Christian that you realize the source of power is with the interaction and with the faith. So today, there's a number of great scriptures, and I'll just refer to them again. Your father 
has all the resources. Just read in the scriptures. Does he want you to have them? He wants you to have life to the full. And so he's well aware of what you need. What are you supposed to think about? If you're fretting and just like with strife, you need to fill yourself up with the word and think on those things in the scriptures to say whatever is pure, right, lovely, and just think on these things. And then you also need to realize that God calls us to pray. How often? Well, you might not like this. He says, without ceasing. Why? Because there's so much trouble in this world. And you guys and gals and kids, this is a reminder to me as much as it is to you, because I forget this thing, these things. And it's so funny because I listened to a previous podcast, which I think I'm going to sit in here and do another podcast. And it's going to be related to that where I talk about the male enhancements. And man, was I listening to that? And did I come under some conviction from my own podcast? I'm like, holy cow, dude. And you laid it on thick. So if you listen to that and you were like, oh, I'm going to have a follow up one to that. It's going to. I don't know that's going to take any weight off of that, but it's going to add some time and some perspective to that. So, hey, you all, you are my community. I so appreciate you. I hope that you appreciate uh, the upgraded sound equipment. And as always, this podcast is 100% free. But if you want to support like the upgrading of equipment and stuff, I'm not spending it on myself. I just, I want to provide you a better product. I want to give you a better product and I want to inspire you and walk with you as we go into a deeper walk of faith. Or those of you out there that haven't entered a walk of faith that you can't enter that walk of faith confidently. So, hey, let me pray for you, my friends, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and Father, they love you. And as we look to you, Father God, we're just thankful that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. And right now, each one that's listening, you care about them. You care about them so much, whether they're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, whether they have been involved in things that they are ashamed of, and even things that we've talked about today, partnered with maybe abortion or something like that, your love does not change and your availability does not change. And so Holy Spirit, right now, wherever anyone is that this is relating to, would you just speak your love and your peace and acceptance to them? And I declare God's favor over you. And you guys, you have a wonderful thumbs up day. Mm -hmm.